let's talk about the, the emergence of, um, of reading proficiency at, at third grade as an issue. It came in, um, in some respects, with the governor um, in, in the 2011 session. Mm -hmm. After three years of trying in another special session, it just doesn't look like it's going anywhere. What do people not like about that approach? You know, some of the issues that the governor has brought to the forefront, um, you know, and I understand where she's coming from with regards to um, uh, having our, our students read at grade level, but uh, it's not something new that we've been trying to work on over the years. Um, it's come to the forefront because that's been her mantra of what she wishes to do. Um, but when you talk about um, intervention and remediation for our children, um, I think there's some special um, ways that we need to focus on working uh, with our students, with our schools, and with our families on trying to bring our students up to par. And you know, from the genesis of, of the third grade retention, currently what we have in statute, um, that was changed back in 2006, where we don't have social promotion. That, that does not exist in the state of New Mexico anymore. So what we have in statute is um, that a student, if not found to be proficient, doesn't say third grade, it can be at any grade. Um, that you know, the student can um, be retained, but first of all, the parent has to be involved. Uh, the parent should be involved at all steps. And you know, our families today are not just a traditional parent. Sometimes it's grandparents, sometimes it's other family members who have guardianship of that child. But what we're hoping um, with my bill, Senate Bill 474, is to make sure that we focus on the intervention and remediation from the onset, from kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Um, and, and all through um, that F Senate Bill 474 talks about is kinder through eighth grade. Um, not all of our children learn at the same rate. When you try and have a standardized assessment or standardized approach as to all of our children should be reading by third grade, um, there's no way, shape, or form that we would ever, ever be able to meet that. And I, I would beg the question in any state in this union that, that does that. Florida tried it. It doesn't work. They've pulled back from pushing that if you go back and research what um, the state of Florida has been doing. Um, when, when we look at the whole issue on, on intervening for our children, you know, we have those who also um, have, another second, have a second language, English, English language learners. There are some differences when you're learning two languages. Sure. If you're just an English owner, only learner, okay, that you might be able to, but then again you come into context as to um, what community that student may live in and come from. Um, there are maybe some learning disabilities that come in. Doesn't mean that they are special education qualified, but there are other um, factors that um, come into the, the um, radar when you're looking as to how we can be helping and working with our children to become proficient in reading. As you go back to the, the parental involvement, what does 474 ask of parents? What does it require of them once their children are identified as, as needing some intervention? Well, in our existing law, parents are not required to be part of um, the discussion, especially when you work with your student, assist student assistance teams, the SAT teams. Um, Senate Bill 474 specifically directs that the parent not just being told that you have to do this for your child or this is why, but it's actually asking for the um, information to be shared with the parent as to how they can uh, guide the student when the student goes home. Remember, student, um, our teachers only have students for a certain part of the day. When they go home, uh, what are we doing to work with our parents to make sure that they understand what is being required of the student? And uh, this, you know, Senate Bill 474 just doesn't focus on reading, though. It also focuses on math. And if you look at all the statistics um, that we have here through our public education department, math and reading, neither one of them is a shining stellar picture of where we are with students, if you wish to call it proficiency, in, in either one. And it, it shows on different grades. Um, what 474 is trying to work on is to make sure that we're using both sides of the brain um, to move forward. If a child doesn't grasp math in the first three years, first, second, or third grade, as you move forward in, in the pre-algebra aspect, you need some extra work and some help. Trying to bring them up after the fact, back in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, um, and it becomes just a matter of memorization, and the student doesn't have the opportunity in which to grasp what we're doing with math. And I realize that the focus of the governor has been on reading, but when we talk about the STEM approach um, for future economic development and such, reading is, is only one part of it. 
Math is the other section, the other piece that I believe, which is why 474 is here to, we need to focus on both, and we can do so. What happens if there's not a parent home when that child goes, or, or, or if the parent says, that may be all well and good, but I'm working two jobs and mm -hmm. I, I can't do this? It's the reality of what's out there in the world. Uh, that's where I believe that our schools, um, of course, it takes funding. You can't keep asking our schools to keep doing more and more without any funding behind. Um, Senate Bill 474 also puts funding into the state equalization guarantee, which means when we call above or below the line to actually fund and pay for interventionist teachers. These are teachers who um, are, at, I would call it the master's level. They have experience. They know how to work in small groups, no larger than eight to work with the students, figuring out maybe, you know, they, they learn a different way. Some of us are more on hands learners. Um, how we can work with that and those teachers take the students and work with them. Um, if there's a, a parent who um, may not be home, there are some other ways that you can work with the student. And again, that's based and left to the school districts to work with the students, um, maybe for some added intervention after school. Um, maybe even working on, for me, it would even be great to work with some of our after school programs to make sure that they have qualified instructors that can help and work with these students too. But that's still an outgrowth of still to come as we discuss this whole intervention remediation. Sure, and it requires sort of, a, to some extent, I guess, a maybe not radical, but a rethinking of the school day, the bus routes, all that stuff. I mean, it gets bigger and bigger the more yes. you, you, as you well know, the yes, more yes. you change things. Mm -hmm. um, is this a generational question? Is this something that you will be working on until you retire from the legislature, do you think? It's an issue that um, is at the foremost, you know, and I've learned with my son. Um, as a single parent, I understand all the issues that are out there and trying to balance work, um, your professional life, being a parent, and trying to figure out how you can work with your student. Um, but uh, my son has the capabilities to work with things. He has mom to help and work with him. But um, many people in our communities need some additional um, instruction, additional work. Our teachers need, um, I think, some more time. One of the things I have um, uh, been talking about for many of you, well, let's say several years, should I say, that um, I believe our, our, we need a little bit more time within the school day. We are so focused on testing and trying to get ready for the standards-based assessments and all these other tests that your teachers truly don't have enough time within the class structure to work with those students. You know, we have other issues on some of the waivers we have um, to uh, allow a larger class size. Well, excuse me, you try and go teach as one teacher to work with 27, 28, up to 30 students, and yet you were still supposed to make sure that those students need a little more help to work with them? It's very hard. I can barely do it as with just one child that I have. How do we expect a teacher to work with 30 different learning styles, 30 different children who may need different, um, who have di different uh, needs, uh, different issues that may be going on, and that one teacher has to work with them. So I think there's some things that we have to look at to restructure our educational system, first of all, funding, um, training of our teachers to bring more teachers online, and again, to, to have that emphasis on working with our families, um, small group instruction, and also strengthening a lot of our after-school programs to make sure that we are helping to in reinforce what the teachers are teaching during the day. Is this something that the governor will sign, I know after Senate Bill 260, Gay Kernan's bill, um, was, was set aside, um, the secretary-designate said, we're going to do right by, by children. Um, the governor has no more of her bills left. Mm -hmm. um, have you been in contact with her about this? Has she said, no thanks, but no thanks? Um, or if this gets passed, is it just wait and see? Well, um, I have not been up to the governor's office to ask her about her support for 474. You know, we also have another bill that, that's in the works and we'll have to see what comes out of the legislative process and then I think proceed up to the governor's office to do the appropriate lobbying um, and see where and what. But I believe it still complements what I think her intent is, but I think this is the better way for us to go and work with our students um, to make sure that they get the proper attention. Um, you know, retaining a student doesn't, doesn't do its job what they say it does. Yeah, it only hurts the student's development, um, attention, and the self-esteem issues. There is no study out there that shows, if you go back and do your research, that shows that uh, retaining a student at any grade level really helps. Thanks. 
Okay.